Okay, so in uh, this video, I just wanted to show, I guess, some random stuff. I uh, I haven't made a video in, a, in quite a while, and I just wanted to make another one. You know, just I guess to show that the project is still going on. And um, in fact, I've been sort of uh, focusing on it, and uh, I'm trying to get it finished. And I'm, you know, yeah, I'm I'm sort of getting, you know getting there <laughs> little by little um, I'm trying to get it finished basically this year so you know um, hopefully it goes well um, but anyway so I wanted to show some updates of things that I've shown in the past that wasn't really finished and uh, you know needed quite a quite some work so one of them was the um, was the what I call the rock monster or Rocky for short. Um, <laughs> so it's this guy and he's in the caves. And um, I had quite a bit of trouble with him, and um, I'm I'm still gonna probably, you know, decide whether I'm uh, completely happy with him. Uh, the biggest uh, the biggest difference between him and the uh, the mummy uh, enemies is that he can run, so you know he has like walking and running and that kind of stuff. And then he can also jump, uh, so he can jump up and jump down, you know, from places. So, so he can pretty much uh, navigate the caves, like you know, getting up these areas and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'd, I've it was quite difficult to actually make that work, you know, let alone work seamlessly, um, which currently it's probably still not completely seamless. Um, well, it's definitely not completely seamless, but it's it might be at a point where I'm okay with it, or, uh, and I'll see um, how things go with uh, play testing and stuff like that. Yeah, so I've I've also got a um, I've also got a bit of an intro uh, going, and I'll I'll talk about that maybe a little bit as well. Um, So, okay, so we'll just spawn him in there, so he should come running down, if he doesn't get stuck, there we go, okay, so he can do that jump attack, and he can do the swipe, um, I wanted to make an enemy, because the mummies are mummies, they don't have any blood or anything like that, um, let's see if he'll jump up, there we go, <laughs> um, I wanted to give this guy some blood, you know, because I want to, I just want to have that, but not like uh, completely gruesome or anything like that. I don't want to make this game, uh, you know, want to make it sort of, I guess, kid friendly in a way, even though there's some blood splatters and stuff like that. But I wanted to get some of that stuff going on. So these guys are going to be fairly dangerous. Um, if you let them sort of go wild, you have to kind of take control of them pretty quick. Um, they can take quite a bit of damage. They will also uh, show damage in the sense of like that. Now, like they'll start to bleed, <laughs> and then of course, you know, the f the, f the further you go, the more they bleed. The closer you get to, you know, you you you're kind of uh, because they can take so much damage, I wanted to show that you, at least you're hurting them. Whereas with the mummies, you know, they uh, some of the bigger ones do take quite a bit of damage, um, <coughs> but not as much as these guys, you know. So yeah, so that's these guys. Um, they kind of work, not too badly. Um, like I said, they were quite 
difficult now he should he should be able to follow me um, here he comes so I've set up a system where he can run extremely quickly if he gets too far behind he can actually run extremely quickly to catch up and in general he'll he'll try and stay with me like that so you know if you're not careful they can surprise you from you know like getting that uh, getting a jump on you and stuff like that so and and I made them fairly difficult so like if if you uh, if you get two of them like if you run too far into the level you might get two or three of them and then you might have some trouble <laughs> uh, but anyway so so that that's those guys and <coughs> I can show the blueprint, but it's quite a mess, and it's one of those things where, you know, I would really like to redo it and do it much cleaner, but I don't think I want to spend the time. I, I, I wanted to get them just to actually work, and, uh, and leave it at that. But I'll kind of give an idea of what, um, what they do, so, so... <laughs> So all this stuff that's actually commented is um, is pretty much all the original enemy stuff, and that's sort of always been there, even though they've it's received tweaks and slight additions and, and things like that. Um, it's it, it's pretty much always you know been this, and then uh, all this is the um all this is extra for the jumper for the for the rock ones there this stuff <coughs> that's not being used anymore so that's still being used so this is not being used anymore um and then there's all this stuff so so this does the jump attack um the jump attack actually it looks very complicated because it probably I guess is maybe a little complicated but he does basically what uh, the reason why it looks a little complicated is because he does a bunch of checks to see whether he can jump attack and it's based on how far away the player is what the surroundings are like is there something between him and the player um, is the player on a different level you know like if he if you know if the player comes up here and he's still down here then maybe he won't jump attack he'll first jump up and then you know start attack you know so there's a bunch of stuff like that that i wanted to you know so the jump attack works fairly cleanly so if there's a clean uh um line uh between the enemy and the player then jump attack is you know good to go um, but you know otherwise you'll kind of you know think twice <laughs> you know um, at first you like run closer instead or whatever the AI um, the AI actually you know the distance isn't actually being checked over here the AI is is doing the distance check to see um, whether he can uh, run or walk, you know, what his speed is supposed to be. His speed is, is distance based, so the further he's away from the player, the faster he can run. Uh, and when the attack happens, uh, you know, that's also distance based, he'll either do a jump attack or a slash. Um, and when he's w when he calls the jump attack, then he does a few extra checks to see if if he's allowed to do it. And there's some things like switching off collision, because the jump attack is much like the player jump, uh, you know, like um, sword jump attacks, where a switch off collision, so you can move through, th you know, move through, you know, any any possible uh, 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 collisions that he might have, like move essentially not collide with the player, even though, like when he does the jump attack, he will actually push you away. Um, so none of that will feel uh, wrong, but um, it's 
just a bunch of little things that I had to build in and build in and build in until it felt right and it ends up you know looking like this which you know and then ultimately it's just moving between between two points uh, using a timeline so just get the existing point and uh, um, so it's it's just a, a loop so loop between two points get the existing point and then loop to the new point uh, which I think think it's just beyond the player it's like a little bit um, uh, you know behind the player and then uh, you know I keep checking updates and uh, up updating the location so if the player moves a little bit he can still hit you but it's not it's only updated for a little while and then you know he'll kind of uh, sort of straighten out so to speak it's little tweaks like that that makes it you know hit you more often than not but not in a weird way and uh, uh, uh you know and doesn't miss if you just sidestep like you know half a meter or you know some stupid things like that it's just it's just to make it work um so the so th so the you know jumping up the ledges and stuff like that jumping down it's basically two systems jumping down and or, or falling down and then jumping up the falling down is essentially um just these things that allow you know these uh links um na uh, nav links that allow the navigation system uh, you know for the ai to link the um you know because the navigation is broken over there you know just to link the navigation so when he tries to get to me he'll come here fall down and then move on i did have to set up some extra things so that uh because the way my ai works keeps updating the player location and that interferes with this uh falling down system and I'm not sure if it's a bug in the engine or if that's just the way it works, but if I keep updating the player location and the, uh, the, the AI is up here, he'll come here and then never actually go down here, even if, you know when I'm down here somewhere. If I stop updating the player location, then he'll come here. because I, th I think the reason why is he needs to create his own new location because he needs to come here first and then come to me. And so if I keep updating the player location, he just stands there and turns around like he keeps trying to reach this point. Instead, he'll never reach, try and reach this point. Um, so I set up a little extra thing where when he gets to this point, he stops looking for the player. So he can jump down and then start looking for the player again. So it's one little extra thing. And it's not perfect like you saw in the... In my playtest just now, he kind of turned around once and then he came down. So that still happens sometimes. Sometimes he'll just come straight down. Uh, sometimes he'll kind of turn around once and then come down. It's just, I'll try and iron stuff like that out if I can. But it's like, a, it's just weird. Um, then the jump up is a completely different story. Um, I ended up doing... A, uh, you know, uh, maybe not. I don't know. Like this is kind of a. I, I I had one system that kind of worked based on triggers, and um, it failed way too much. And and what what needs to happen is I want to be able like if the creature's there, and I keep running across the level there. He needs to be able to find his way to me, regardless of anything. And um, and so my original system really failed with that. Like he, if I don't run too far ahead, then he can make it up to me. Uh, but you know, if I completely run away from him, um, he he'll fail to get to me. And my current system seems to work quite well for him to actually end up finding me again 
Um, so even if the jump kind of fails a little bit, eventually it will succeed. <coughs> um, so the way I do it, and this looks like, you know, I mean, this is quite brute force. There's no attempt at, you know, making things simpler. Uh, essentially, it's doing the exact same thing over and over. I'm doing a, um, so first what I'm doing is I'm doing a trace and uh, if I hit a wall um, then so 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 these th this is eight traces right so in a in sort of a star pattern so because the creature won't necessarily face this way uh, face towards the wall I needed to trace around him and so uh, generally for some reason they would face like you know that way or something like that then they hardly ever kind of face the wall uh, directly when they you know get to the wall they immediately start like turning around and doing weird things um, and that's of course for the same reason that the the navigation is broken I'm in some other place he can't find me so he keeps trying to get to this point because there's a link between these two navigations uh, navigation meshes and uh, so he keeps kind of you know uh, uh, rotating there and so I trace uh, a, like an eight pointed star right like 90 degrees in all directions and then 45 off from that in all directions um, and so I will hit, you know, something uh, correctly. So, so the way the trace works is um, I'll trace for a wall. And so, so the wall trace will hit on, on multiple places, but the wall trace is only valid <coughs> if I can then also find an, uh, um, a valid navigation uh, area above that wall so I'll trace for the wall and then uh, you know a little further on I'll trace from the top down and look for a valid navigation uh, mesh and if I find it I'll jump to it and so that seems to work actually uh, quite well even though the jump the trace attempts um, might cause him to uh, wait just a little bit if if it happens I'll trace forward first um, and then side you know to the side and, and around him from there you know at a 45 degree uh, angle um, so tracing forward first uh, if that one hits and finds navigation it's very quick he'll run and jump very quickly uh, you know if the fifth trace finds navigation you know it he takes a little bit longer but he will find the navigation uh, you know eventually even if he gets stuck just a little bit which you know I, f I feel like is is um, it is acceptable uh, you know considering it's so difficult to make it work uh, for me um, uh, but I'll see like the thing that I want to iron out probably the most is like see there he didn't fall off straight away See there, so uh, he jumped up nicely there and fell off nicely there and You can see also he stopped jump attacking there when I jumped up so that's part of that checking system So he'll keep checking like as he does the jump attack am I still in a valid area and if I if I go out of out of range or something he'll just immediately stop like the jump attack will end he, he won't just sort of get to me regardless you know going through things and doing stuff like that so you can see the you know the the jumping up kind of see there he got stuck just a little bit and there again but he eventually makes it and again but he's gonna make it eventually I think yeah there we go <laughs> so it's you know uh, not perfect that was cool you know they ran straight off it's cool when it goes smoothly I wish I could um, you know like have it always go smoothly I just you know it's just beyond my um, sort of I guess knowledge of how to get that 
so they they're quite aggressive like when they stuff work they they also they they come you know they come off as being quite aggressive which is really cool but i guess it's it's also sort of uh because they get basically animals if they hesitate a little bit here and there it's not the end of the world you know that's i will chalk that up as being behavior <laughs> uh but they w will want to kill you, uh, you know, and they, you know, they, they will be fairly difficult unless you take control. Like if you, and the way you have to control them is basically by hitting them. Uh, I considered adding a hit breaker, like a, 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 you know, an attack breaker for the enemy. So if you keep hitting them too much, they can break your um, sequence. Um, but that's one of those things that I will. Um, that's one of those things that I will um, look at when the game is basically done, and I'm I'm then gonna. So when the game is done. When the game is done, I'm gonna be making some decisions with, uh, you know, what I what I add to it, like more animations and stuff like this, uh, you know, like the attack breaker kind of stuff, you know, extra behavior and stuff like that that won't necessarily um, have too much of an impact on what's already there, and but will be a lot of work regardless. So, I did for the player. Um, I used to have it where you can just keep doing combo, 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 but now I have an auto stop, so you saw it there. <coughs> so you can't just indefinitely keep comboing. So so you have to kind of, uh, you if you want to count your hits or whatever, but it, like right at the end there, it does like a kick and then the combo is done. Then, then you have to restart. So you have to sort of keep track of your hits if you want to do the finisher effectively um so it's not just uh, do whatever you want you know there's there's a little bit more to it now it's still pretty easy you know you have quite a few hits because you want to be able to build up the combo so you can do like a, a, a heavy finish um but yeah it's not indefinitely anymore you can't just keep hitting indefinitely you have to sort of uh, take control of what you're doing um you know, hopefully I can, uh, uh, you know, do some more attack animations and stuff like that. It's th those are the most difficult things for me, other than some of the programming stuff or the scripting stuff. Um, and doing like uh, character animation is, uh, you know, it's quite difficult. You can slice this guy in half, and then you know. So the way the blood works is. Um, do you see the blood will sit there now for the rest of the game essentially until I start attacking another enemy and the way the blood works is I spawn um, we'll just take a little okay it doesn't actually show the decal stuff but anyway uh, I pre-spawn a bunch of decals um, and just keep them in the level basically and then I will set their position based on where I want blood um, I do a little check so there's not a bunch of overlap so you know if if one if a if a new blood uh, particle uh, I mean if a new blood decal needs to be um, you know where there's already blood I'll check and see is there already how close am I to this decal if it's too close then don't even put it there because otherwise you get like 50 decals right on top of each other and you know that that's that's not really useful so um, so that's basically it so all these decals are always in the level and um, as as they are needed I will just move them you know so the oldest one will just move you know every time the oldest one will just move to the to the new to a new location where I need it to be so if I fight the new 
uh, enemy then uh, unless there's some that hasn't been used um, so see now there's a little pool there and uh, possibly some of these have been taken out but I have quite a few so I can have like I think I can have see now you can see some of them are getting taken away there um, and then used in a new area but they won't get taken if if this if the location is invalid like if it's too close to another one already then they will just won't even be taken but that's how the blood works so it's I don't keep spawning new decals and stuff like that I just pre-spawn a bunch of them and then move them around as I need them so, so I can always have the blood there um, and the impact on the game the impact on memory never changes it's always the exact same basically uh, so these guys are essentially just here to give health in this area um, I have some health placed but I will take those out because uh, I changed my mind on placing health and rather have some enemies that you have to kill to get health from them uh, you know and it's one of those things I would like to make them look different it's again one of those things that I'll decide when the game is done and I'm and I'm gonna reserve some time for extra things then I'll decide whether I want to create a new uh, model for that you know for the for the cave mummies essentially um, so I just want to go take a look back there now at the other blood so there should still be blood there a little bit but not really and this should be no there's still quite a bit there so yeah there's a whole bunch, I don't remember how many, maybe I spawned maybe like a hundred of them or something. <laughs> um, so that, so I guess that's that creature. Um, I, I kind of wanted to talk about some other stuff, but I think what I'll do real quick. Uh, so my intro, um, just get my so my intro uh, is pretty simple I just did like a very short little thing just to get the game started um, and then I've got a thing where you can uh, skip it um, which you know I'm I'm gonna change that just a little bit so I've got a loading screen so what I want to do is I only want to have you be able to skip it just a little bit into the intro and you can hold down the button so if you press any button uh, it'll pop up that skip intro thing and then you can see oh you have to hold it down you know I kind of uh, you know most modern games do that and I, and I like that idea it's pretty cool so uh, as soon as you press the button uh, it it pops up the thing so you can see oh you can skip it and you can just hold it down and then skip it so that's pretty cool so you can't do it accidentally by just uh, pressing a button you have to hold it down and it's just a very simple intro just to <laughs> just to you know it, it, I'm not gonna say like I came up with a story or anything for the game very specifically but you know there's some stuff that I considered being a story for the game very cliched very um, simple uh, but it, yeah it, it's there's not going to be anything said there's not going to be anything written uh, it, it's going to be sort of hinted at you know just by seeing some stuff happening and then uh, in the outro you know and when you finish the game there's going to be a little outro sequence and again nothing said or written or anything like that you're just going to kind of see some you know s see what's sort of what's what or whatever and then um, you know sort of I guess ha have a little something there like have some bookends there for the game you know start and finish um, <laughs> But yeah, I've been uh, like I've been tweaking the AI quite a bit, trying to get them. 
I mean, these guys are pushovers, so, and I've got all the moves unlocked, so they're quite easy right now. But um, these guys, of course, are the cannon fodder. Um, uh, so, yeah, they're never really specifically difficult. But in bigger groups, you know, they can... And if you put a few of the more difficult guys in there, you know, it, uh, they can overwhelm you a little bit. And the the way the AI works now is a little bit more, um, they react a little bit better, a little bit faster. Um, things just work better in general from, you know, how, how, how it was, um, you know, a while back. Like, well, this is all stuff I've been doing over the last few uh, months and weeks and months, I guess. Uh, just tweaking, 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 trying to get things uh, polished up and buttoned up and adding the last bunch of stuff that's needed. Um, I also made the stuff that spawns in the pots work much better. It's now actually, it's now actually only working correctly. Like I didn't, uh, when I looked at that system, uh, actually just a week two weeks ago a week ago something like that i looked at that system and it's like you know it wasn't even working correctly like it wasn't it's supposed to spawn um health and the extra lives thing and also uh, um, uh new skins for the ninja which i don't think i have right now uh at by breaking enough pots and in random intervals. So it's not exactly the same always, but it's similar. Like you will get in similar, in, in sort of the, in, in sort of similar uh, spots, you will get the same kind of spawns, but not exactly the same, not exactly the same pot every single time. Uh, and that system didn't, work at all really it, it i guess it worked but man, it was it was completely not like um you know working correctly so um that and then i set up this um special system where like if if in a case like this like if i'm underneath this thing right i can in the level in the editor i can go and that archway thing above me I can just switch off the collision and I can jump through it and it won't hinder any of the attacks and stuff like that. So that's fine because I can never get there anyway. But in a case like this, I can actually come here and I can jump on this thing. But when I attack, I don't want it to interfere. So I've set up a system where, you know, it'll disable collision there when it's needed and enable it when it's needed. And I use that in a few places, um, especially in the castle level where you have floors above other floors um, and so when you do this jump attack specifically i don't like hitting a ceiling so i have a system there to actually disable collision for everything above me when i do this jump attack and when i when i'm supposed to be able to run there uh it, it'll work you know it, I, there'll be collision there for me um, it's all these little things all these little things that, you know, make the game uh, feel good, play good, you know, stuff like that. It's just, it's things you can never consider, <laughs> you know, when you're making it, uh, unless you made it, you know, stuff like that. So, Okay, so I don't want this video to go on too much longer, but um, Uh, I don't know if I'll make another video showing some of the boss stuff. The boss is now completely uh, um, uh, playable from start to finish. You can you can completely fight the boss, all the stages, kill him, and the, uh, the outro animation will play and everything. Like all that stuff is done. It's actually set up, um, and I might show that in another video, but. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mainly update and show that I'm, you know, this game is, <laughs> it's going on for anybody that still cares, if anybody ever cared, uh, you know, the the game is, is still, is still, uh, it's going to get done. It is not, it's not that far from being done. In fact, 
um, but uh, yeah there's still quite a bit of stuff to do uh, so yeah I just wanted to actually update with the rock monster because I did show him before but he uh, he wasn't in working order and um, yeah I kind of wanted to show the boss as well but I think the video is getting too long for that maybe I'll show the boss in an, in, an, in, an, in another video uh, later on something like that um, which were the two major things really like this rock monster and the boss were the two major things that were missing from you know uh, that were very far from being complete um, and needed a lot of work and you know technically you can always argue there's still work left but yeah at some point I'll cut it off and I'll say that's you know it's done but um anyway so before I start rambling on even more I'm gonna say um, uh, thanks for watching and thanks for everybody that kind of uh, followed my videos along over the you know over the course of the you know making this game um, hopefully Hopefully this game won't take too much longer. Um, so, yeah, um, that's it for this video.